Hi, welcome everybody. Um, we're here to talk about smart NICs and moving to next generation, um, 25 gig, 50 gig, 40 gig, 100 gig in the data center. I am Anita Traigler. I'm a product manager for Red Hat focused on NFE and networking. Hi, and uh, I'm Nick Dasanovich, and I'm VP of Solutions Architecture at Metronome, and I'm focused on smart NICs and NFV. Um, All right. Actually, I'll start with the. Uh, <laughs> so, um, Anita is going to talk in detail about uh, some of the options for server based networking data path implementation. Uh, but I'm going to start off with uh, a uh, description of the problem statement. So, um, everybody's seen this chart about global network tra traffic exploding, right, going off the chart. The point I want to make here is that the problem is even worse for NFV because in data centers implementing NFV, we're doing a lot of service chaining where traffic is bouncing back and forth between different uh, services running in different VMs and containers. Uh, so east-west traffic is growing even faster than this graph uh, shows. Uh, on the right side, we see that uh, silicon is not getting any cheaper. In fact, the costs are, are leveling off, and we're not getting the benefits of Moore's Law. And that means that we need to be very, very smart about the way that we implement data path functions to get good costs in the data center. So, Anita? And here's uh, the data path options that we have today uh, for 10 gig, ser 10 gig servers. Um, we're talking. With OpenStack, our default, default configuration is OpenV switch with the kernel data path. And this one gives you a ton of features, switching, bonding, overlay, but your performance is, does not meet what you want. If you want higher performance, you got to move to the right. And this is what we have today in deployment for NFE, uh, a lot of SRIOV. And this is hardware dependent on your NIC vendor, uh, but you can get line rate. You can get line rate 10 gig. But if you want any switching options, you're dependent on your top of rack switch. There are no switching options. Uh, moving more to the right, which is new GA for Red Hat OpenStack, is OpenV switch, OVS DPDK, uh, with the data plane uh, uh, toolkit. With that, you can get direct I.O. to the NIC and some switching options, bonding, overlay, some overlay offloads. Uh, but you have to give up a few cores on your um, host to be able to do DPDK, entirely devoted to pole mode drivers. So if you want to go beyond 10 gig, 25 gig, and 25 gig and 50 gig is the new 10 gig in the data center. And if you want to go there and you have 25 gig servers, we have to move to OVS offload uh, as our new next gen technology. What is Red Hat and what are all our NIC vendors uh, doing? We are working with multiple NIC vendors to get OVS offload both in the kernel and in OVS and in DPDK. Uh, our goal is make sure we have everything upstream, all drivers upstream first, and to integrate with OpenStack, must. that's a must as well. And our goal is to standardize the API, both in the OVS kernel, in the OVS DPDK, and OpenStack. So um, a little bit uh, about SmartNix. Um, so SmartNix's uh, sole purpose is to accelerate uh, and offload the server networking data path. Uh, so Netronome is a, a vendor of SmartNix. And uh, uh, there are many models for offload, as Anita just alluded to. Uh, basically, uh, at a high level, uh, what we're doing is m moving functions that are uh, traditionally implemented in the server data path, either in Linux or in something like an open vSwitch, for instance, uh, where we're doing uh, complex functionality uh, involving overlay uh, processing, uh, traffic classification, QoS, uh, security rules and policies, uh, and things like that uh, that are not typically done in the NIC card uh, today. Uh, the smart NIC actually does do those things. And so we are actually moving that functionality from the server uh, sorry, uh, into the smart NIC as shown in this diagram. Uh, and what we're doing is bypassing either partially or completely the server networking data path, which is eating up CPU cycles in the server, 
hogging down the server and actually uh, creating a bottleneck that's in many cases starving, uh, in the NFV case, starving the VNFs that are trying to uh, execute on the server. Uh, so the smart NIC pulls all of that down into the uh, NIC card itself. Uh, in this particular case, we're showing it being implemented in the Netronome Flow processor, which is our uh, silicon, uh, purpose-built silicon uh, that's designed to implement the smart NIC functionality. And uh, Anita's going to go into more detail now about uh, how this is, uh, is, is done. So over here, uh, we have a use case that we're working on today with uh, a number of NIC vendors, uh, the SRIOV with OVS fallback. So you have SRIOV, so this is merging the worlds of OVS and SRIOV. So you have SRIOV VFs directly to the VNF, but you also have a PF. Uh, a physical function going into the OVS bridge. Um, and so you have now OVS in two locations. You have OVS in the kernel and you have OVS in the NIC. You have two OVS versions and you're, off, you're offloading your control. Uh, your OVS control is now going to offload using TC Flower, uh, which is the traffic control piece in the kernel. It's going to decide which flows are going to be offloaded to the switch and some flows will continue to stay in the um, OVS bridge on the host. So uh, there are some features. So most of the white features, in the features in white are already uh, being worked on and available. Some of the advanced con connection tracking and fallback to OVS are not supported by all NIC vendors. This is um, on a case-by-case -case basis. These are vert IO options. If you're not interested in SRIOV and you want to do live migration, then these are some of the vert IO options. And Nick will go into a few more as well. But this is, um, if you're using, you want to use um, OVS DPDK and you want to do a partial offload. So the whole flow is not offloaded, but you want to take advantage of uh, Nick vendors uh, like Netronoma providing. Uh, QoS, security groups, contract, overlay offload, you could still do that and still have pretty good for performance. Or you can do another option with, with another NIC vendor is looking at where they're moving your OVS completely into the NIC. There is no OVS in the host and then you have to worry about tighter integration testing uh, because now you have to deal with uh, OpenStack talking directly to the NIC or through an SDN controller. Yeah, and then briefly, this is uh, uh, these are the models that Netronome uh, is very focused on. Um, so we have uh, a, a basically a user space agent, uh, which is a relay agent uh, that implements the Vert IO backend uh, and talks to VMs. So VMs see a, a nice Vert IO uh, vendor agnostic interface that's very good for, for live migration, uh, but you get the very, very high performance of the SmartNIC. Uh, so that's our model on the left that you're seeing there. Uh, and Netronome supports that today. Uh, and then we're moving to a model uh, on the right, which will um, uh, provide the same functionality in terms of Vert.io and live migration, uh, but the relay agent now moves down into the silicon, uh, so it's even more efficient. Anita? Uh, I will not go into depth in this since we're running out of time, but these are the open source communities that we have to work with. Um, and you can see everything in white is going to be either delivered or shortly delivered. Everything in yellow is still a work in progress and some of it is in the design phase. Uh, just looking quickly at the advantages and limitations. Yes, we can get line rate, especially if you're using SRIOV, if you're using any kind of word IO, there will be some performance hit, um, but not as bad. It it's, uh, has to be benchmark. It's not, not as bad as doing pure OVS. Um, you have all the advantages of all the offload capabilities and in some cases, you may have fallback. You have option to fall back to OVS if you're uh, having control plane traffic or you have a failure or you've exceeded the capacity of the NIC. There are some limitations, of course, using OVS offload. Uh, you have to, you may need to do certification uh, every time a new OpenStack or a new OVS releases to make sure your NIC vendor is compliant with the latest one. Uh, your bonding is limited now. You cannot go across NIC. You have to do within the same NIC bonding. Your feature availability depends on your NIC firmware. So you need to make sure your NIC firmware is updating at the pace OVS and OpenStack updating. Uh, Vert.io for live migration is needed. You need Vert.io. You can't do it with SRIOV. 
um, and there are different options with that. And then you have um, varied flow capacity based on your uh, NIC vendor and how much memory or cache is available and whether you're running contract or other security options. And there's a five tuple match. I think we're done. Any questions? Right, as I said, uh, it's not supported today. It's a uh, future uh, uh, direction for Netronome. Uh, it's coming, upcoming release, right? Um, that's, uh, that's the situation with Vert.io. The, the driver is uh, 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 not yet uh, uh, um, decided whether that will be a separate uh, version or not. Do you have a timeline for this year? Uh, you can come see me after the talk. <laughs>